Welcome back to episode 21, where we're going to talk about becoming selfish. This is for all you people pleasers out there. I think this probably, hopefully, captured the attention of a lot of people when they saw that we are intentionally becoming selfish. Mm -hmm. And we want to really debunk any sort of negative connotations around that. At Self Made You, we put a very strong emphasis on yourself Mm -hmm. and recognizing that there is your past self, your current self, and your future self, and tapping into the identities that you carry forward and deciding about which self you're going to connect to and make decisions from. Mm -hmm. So Becoming Selfish, we thought, was a really good title that very much describes a lot of what we teach. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're being inconsiderate of other people. It actually, to the contrary, it impacts people's, other people's lives in a very positive way. So we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But before we do, (laughs) let's talk about our captivating uh, past week. Anything exciting? happen in your world because i can't think of a lot of (laughs) excitement that happened in my world no i think we've been really heads down lately with work so um yeah nothing too crazy going on here i can hear the dogs wrestling in the background so yeah they were a big part of our weekend i feel like i spent probably more time with them than anybody yeah but yeah we watched the, our Vikings win against the 49ers on Monday, which was super exciting. Yeah, I think I was asleep by then, but <laughs> <laughs> I watched most of it. Yeah, and prior to that, we were out to dinner with some friends celebrating mm-hmm. birthdays. and it was so funny how kind of the chat chatter around the table was it was very negative towards the Vikings and how, oh, we're gonna rush home only to watch them lose. Yeah. And, you know, and so I was super excited to watch them win. Okay, so let's talk about becoming selfish. Okay. And we've already kind of said we're actually recording this for all of the people pleasers out there. Yeah, this I think, will be a very therapeutic episode for me. And we can all relate to people pleasing, right? Like, why don't you tell us what people pleasing means to you or what the characteristics are of people pleasing? Yeah, I am... A people pleaser to my core I think that I've always known that. like I've always it's not it wasn't a secret to me that I was a people pleaser but I think it's become very clear to me that people pleasing is kind of destructive mm-hmm. in your life and in so many different ways that like I really what? had no idea well we can get into that I think that we should start with maybe the characteristics of people pleasers okay so that you can notice i think for some people it's very obvious that you're a people pleaser and for some people maybe it's a little bit less obvious well some people wear it like a badge of honor too i think yeah that was me that was me (laughs) until i realized how sabotaging it really is yeah um yeah i definitely was like no i am a people pleaser like I love to people please. And as long as you're doing it for the right reasons and it actually doesn't get in the way of you living your best life, then I guess it depends on how you define it. But Well, there's a difference between people pleasing and like helping or serving people. Right. There's a big difference between that. I think that there is no issue with helping, like wanting to help or serve somebody else. But there is a huge issue with doing that in lieu of your own needs. Right, right. Yeah, sacrificing your own needs Mm -hmm. or doing it in actually more of like a manipulative way, trying to control what other people think and feel about you. Mm -hmm. Anything you do should be from a place of, you know, do I really want to do this for the right reason? Right. Because if you're doing it, trying to manipulate somebody's Mm -hmm. feelings, what is going to good or bad i mean right what's gonna what's gonna come from is a lot of resentment yeah and you can probably relate to that yeah usually when i'm explaining that concept to clients they don't see themselves in that identity as a people pleaser until you bring up the feeling of resentment and then they're like oh yeah i have tons of resentment towards this person that they have been you know 
people pleasing. Well, and typically as a people pleaser, I can say this because I totally am. Like you don't see yourself as being manipulative right? either. It is a manipulative tactic that you don't realize that you're doing. Right. It's unintentional. But yeah. Yeah. So ways to notice if you are a people pleaser are excessive need for approval. So people pleasers have an overwhelming desire to be liked, accepted, and approved of by others. It's very true for me. I like to say that I don't care what other people think, but when it comes down to it, I definitely people please with the intentions of people liking me or liking being around me, I think is what it is. Okay. Any ideas of where that might have come from? Um, I mean, in school, I just liked to be liked <laughs> so I think I got very good at training myself to not make waves to not be confrontational to be very accepted yeah accepted and to be liked I liked the feeling of people wanting to be around me mm -hmm. so I definitely trained myself to be a people pleaser mm -hmm. it's also having difficulty saying no which when I think about it, saying no isn't even something I really consider most of the time. Whatever. I feel like you say no all the time to me. Well, to you? I'm not trying to people please you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Glad we're clear on that. <laughs> when it comes to people pleasing, I not don't mom pleasing. Consider... No, no. I. It's just funny. Like I don't. I would not think of myself as. Any difficulty saying no I guess in other areas I don't <laughs> but when it comes to like people that I care about what they think about me I don't even consider no like it goes yes like immediately my brain is like yep sure uh -huh. and so do you see the connection between saying yes in a very reactive way and sometimes yeah it's probably something that you ultimately legitimately <laughs> want to do and so it actually all feels good and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that or there's nothing getting in the way of you living out your day but mm -hmm. do you see where the resentment starts to happen when you say yes to something yeah. that you actually didn't want to do yeah and it's funny because I feel like it's been more recent that I've even considered something like that I've known I'm a people pleaser and I started to pick up on the bad tendencies and the patterns that, yeah that go along with it but I feel like I didn't really consider this my difficulty in saying no it's just such a habit at this point that I before I even consider if it's something that I want to say yes to I just do it and then I face the consequences afterwards if it isn't something that I actually want to do. And I'll then have to go back and make that decision whether I want to follow through with it or not. But I feel like I trained myself to like give that immediate yes to get that instant <laughs> dopamine hit. Yeah. Of being of people, accepted. Yeah. Of people liking being around me or being like, oh, she, yeah, she likes to do all the things I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> She is like the most perfect person in the whole wide world. Yeah. And I think that my consequences of that are definitely when it's something that I actually sit on or if it's like a commitment that I make that I really don't want to follow through with, then I'm stuck with the decision on how, either how do I get out of this or how do I force my way through it, basically. Yeah, and suck it up. Yep. Yeah. So are you recognizing like you see you have seen that pattern are you recognizing how becoming more selfish is helping are you becoming mm -hmm. more self-aware and starting to kind of intercept before it unfolds into some sort of self-sabotage yeah it's making me actually take a second yeah and think about if it's something that I actually want to commit to rather than yep. just blindly committing to everything yeah and that also is a uh, characteristic is overcommitment mm. to things and it gets me in so much trouble because half the time I've said yes to so many random things that I didn't even I wasn't even aware that I was doing it or like intentionally saying yes to it that I forget about it mm. and then I like overbook or overcommit on things um 
And then I'm stuck with telling one side no. Yeah. And so it's like. So it's really sabotaging because yeah. you're getting actually the exact opposite of yeah. what you intended. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another characteristic is avoiding conflict. I think that's spot on. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. But what's so first. funny is that. I would really challenge you to not be so black and white in your thinking. Avoiding conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's, again, if you are sacrificing your own wants, needs, desires, then it might be something that you want to look at, right? So (laughs) Yeah, I do that. (laughs) All of this, like even, you know, saying yes to Mm -hmm. all the things. That's not a bad thing unless it's getting in the way of you you know, living your best life. So I I appreciate that you, you know, have that awareness of when it is getting in the way. But I just want to point out that, you know, this isn't a black and white discussion. Mm -hmm. You can be somebody who's kind of a yes person and you can might, you maybe are a very adventurous, you know, you're somebody who loves to always be on the go and it's very fulfilling to you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Right. It's you just have to slow down and like assess whether you're doing these things because you want to or you're doing these things because you're trying to manipulate the way other people think about you. Right. And I think the avoiding conflict, I do see, obviously, I see the upside to avoiding conflict, especially if it's not necessary or you would be in danger because of it. Obviously, I see the why people would want to avoid conflict. But I have also been in situations where I've avoided conflict, even when I was what I felt like was in the right. I've avoided conflict in order to not make waves or to not make anybody else feel uncomfortable. I mean, most of the time, silly conflicts with friends, but things that could have been addressed Mm -hmm. in a more productive way, in a more productive way, rather than me avoiding it and then resenting it later. Yeah. So being selfish now, like being really self-aware, mm-hmm. I mean, can you look at all of those experiences and be like, now that's the contrast. Now I know what I don't want to continue to kind of repeat. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of see the gift and the opportunity in those experiences, having those experiences in the first place. Like you don't have to beat yourself up over it. Yeah. It's like they actually had a purpose. You now are aware of like what you don't want to continue to repeat. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing. And that's that's part of what it looks like to kind of become selfish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. What else? Any other characteristics of people pleasing? Yeah. There's a whole list of them um, like uh, fear of rejection, difficulty expressing true feelings, low self-esteem, seeking perfection excessive apologizing and I feel like that comes into play a lot for me because like I said when I overcommit then I ultimately have to say no to something and then I feel like Mm -hmm. oh crap how can I fix this I like excessively apologize and then overcompensate and try to fix it it's so funny because I like literally don't even know this person that you're explaining that you're describing it's it's with friends though like it's with obviously (laughs) it's certainly not in this house (laughs) You rule this house like it's your job. Well, I don't. You make you're very decisive. (laughs) There's no people pleasing going on. (laughs) There's no avoiding conflict. Okay, but (laughs) like I said, this is something I trained myself to do a long time ago. I didn't need to train myself to (laughs) get you you guys to like me. That was forced on you. True. True. (laughs) But yeah, oh, I don't even know where I left off. Yeah, well, those are all, I think that those are good descriptions of people who can identify with being a people pleaser. I don't really love thinking of people as a people, you know, like they're a people pleaser. I think they might have tendencies, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. describe them or identify people as a people pleaser. I don't think that's helpful. But I also want to point out that those tendencies are actually stemming from their strengths, their inherent strengths. Typically, people who are people pleasing, Mm -hmm. they are the most considerate, empathetic people. And so it's really it's those kind of strengths that are just being overused and kind of abused and Mm -hmm. showing up in a people pleaser sort of way. 
So that's important to know, especially for those people who are identifying as and they're like kind of labeling themselves as a bad person because now we've just identified what people pleasing tendencies look like. We want to highlight it or spotlight it so that you have an awareness so that you can ask yourself the question, is this getting in the way of me living my best life? Like, that's the question you should be asking yourself. There is no right or wrong. It's like, is it helpful or is it unhelpful? Right. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I've always known that I'm definitely a lot more empathetic and compassionate, but I feel like that was the big eye opener for me was because I never saw people pleasing as a destructive yeah. tendency yeah. in my life. I always saw it as I just want to help. I just want I just want to be helpful to people. And and I thought being liked went along with that too. Right. Like And here's the thing. You can be helpful and you right. still can be liked and you still can live your right. best life. It isn't an either or. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I think that it's really, I don't know, mature, I guess, to assess where is this showing up in your life? Asking yourself, is this what I want to continue to create? Do I want to continue to have these patterns or do I want to do something about it? The antidote to having these kind of people-pleasing tendencies that may be getting in the way of you living your best life is really becoming more self-aware or selfish. Understanding that you always have a choice. It starts right there. Mm -hmm. You always have a choice to think different, to feel different, to behave different. Whereas I think probably your younger self, when a friend would, you know, call you and ask you or text you or whatever the heck you guys do now, because like nobody yeah. calls you. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like I hear your phone ringing. You're always on it, but it's not that it's ringing. Right. OK. So anyways, you get an invitation that okay. you would just knee jerk reactively say yes to. Now you can, like you said, pause and remind yourself that you have a choice. This Mm -hmm. is not them, you know, forcing something on you as if you don't have a choice. You always have a choice. You're not victim to an invitation, right? So just the pausing is really important. But the pausing combined with the reminder that you have a choice is the kind of belief, I guess, that's going to create a sense of self-control. So self-awareness over conformity is, I think, what we should be striving for, recognizing that, you know, we have personal desires. Okay, so after hearing some of those characteristics, I definitely can see the people-pleasing tendencies that I have. I think as a mom, it's so easy to fall into the wanting to do so much for your family members. I have clients who tell me this all the time that they only know how to live in this world of being a mom by doing for all of their children and their husband. And they don't, they feel like they've completely lost a sense of what it is that they want or what it is that they need. I can relate a little bit to that. I definitely will self-sacrifice for the benefit of, you know, my kids' needs once being met. And I guess there's a few times that I can recall maybe being resentful about that, but I don't know if, I think because I've had such significant roles outside of the house my role wasn't really as a house maker and um you know like a doting mom that just Mm -hmm. really wasn't ever my kind of identity I think I have you know not experienced it as much as some of my clients certainly have and so then when they a lot of women I think yeah and then their kids go off to college and they're just kind of left going okay Mm -hmm. what is my role now But I also really want to, again, say that you may have done all of those things because it ultimately fulfilled you and there's no shame in that. So 
I don't know if I would call that people pleasing. I would. Well, I wouldn't say that they it's about shaming. I think that there are moms that have created like this home life that is always being everything for everyone yeah, in their and house. saying yes all the time. And yeah, and I think that that's where it becomes an issue. It yeah. can be destructive because I think when you are always saying yes and maybe it isn't something that you'd want to do, but maybe it is. You're actually training all of those people. You're teaching them how to treat you. They're always going to come with an expectation that the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And the first time you say no, it's going to rock their world. And yours. You're training yourself, too. I, yeah. like, just like me, like I tra completely trained myself to right. or my mind to always come up with yes rather than stopping and thinking about it. And it's like, that will rock your world too. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Always used to saying yes and then carrying around guilt for having to say no to some things. Yeah. And I think also you're kind of robbing your children of the ability to create resilience, mm -hmm. to create self-reliance when you're always the person trying to curate this perfect experience for them. I mean, there's a lot of assumptions being made with that statement, but I think that for those of you, adult moms especially, who are like, oh my gosh, that's so me. And all I did was people please. I people please day in and day out. Where all I do is people please. Yeah. Still. I would say, again, measure that against if it got in the way of your own, you know, needs being met, then maybe it was people pleasing. But like, good on you for acknowledging it and having an awareness for it today. And you can absolutely use some of our tips um, to navigate out of that, navigate out of those patterns. Um, as a business owner and a coach, I see it showing up more. I definitely will have those knee-jerk reactions when a client texts and says, can you hop on a call with me right now or could you send me a file yeah that's a good one that's a good point i am that person life. right without even thinking about how that like knee-jerk reaction to be like yes 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 of course i can <laughs> how that's going to actually interfere with my day and like kind of you know stop the momentum and you know i don't really think that through and then the yes turns into resentment once I realize how it actually got in the way of the day. Or it turns into always feeling like you need to say yes. Yes, because now I've just treated, the, I've just taught them how to, you know, treat me, mm -hmm. right? Like they're not doing it from a malicious, they're, or they're probably not even trying to manipulate. They're just asking yeah. a question, right? So it's, but it's, it's probably good for anybody that is maybe a team leader or like in a professional space that is so used to being the point person mm -hmm. and probably is interrupted 30 times a day mm -hmm. and it's like imagine how much time you you probably would have had if you were able to not people please your way through the day yeah for your employees obviously you're doing it with the hopes of helping them but in reality it's okay to delegate some of those things and to trust that They'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than putting it all on yourself and then being resentful by the end of the day about how much stuff you weren't able to get done. Right. Yeah. We have our certain strengths. We have our weaknesses. And accepting that of ourselves and accepting that about other people instead of trying to fit everybody into this one box. I was just on a podcast earlier this morning and somebody was saying, gosh, I learned so much about myself by having guests like you on my show. And she's like, it makes me realize how unique everyone actually is. She's like, because I forget that we're not all the same and that we don't all think the same and that we don't. And I mean, that sounds so obvious, but I do think we have this expectation that we should all be behaving in the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And we start to kind of lose a sense of appreciation for other people's uniqueness 
And so when you're more aware of your own unique strengths, characteristics, I think you will inherently be more aware of other people's and you'll appreciate it Mm -hmm. and you'll allow them to be unique without kind of judging. Yeah. Or trying to manipulate, trying to change their opinion. What else about being selfish? I would say you're going to be active in the pursuit of eliminating self-sabotage. For sure. You are going to be so aware of those narratives like the people pleaser, like the avoider, like the judge, that you're going to be so less likely to be reacting without questioning. I think that's what it looks like to be selfish. I think mastering decision making, really prioritizing your emotions that you want to be experiencing. This is what we're focusing so much on right now is because we're launching our self-made day planner and it has a strong emphasis on deciding how you want to feel hour by hour by hour, task by task, commitment by commitment day by day. I don't think there's any other planner out there that asks you that, or maybe Mm -hmm. there is, but I'm not aware of it. But asking you to make that decision ahead of time about how you want to be feeling. You can even go so far as to tap into your future self and how would she advise you to be feeling at that moment. But making those decisions, not just leaving it to chance and seeing how things unfold. And then I would say empowering yourself to make commitments, like trusting in your decisions, engaging only with the things that really align with your values, your beliefs, kind of, you know, along the lines of what you were just talking about. And I would say really living into the value of incremental steps. So somebody who is selfish or very self-aware is going to also have the realization that everything is a process that you've got to start somewhere and there is lots of value in incremental steps no matter how small they are Mm -hmm. and so that's where again commitment comes back into play if you're committed to a certain activity or a certain behavior and you're only making the small steps those steps add up over time and if you compare that to not taking not showing up for the commitment or not taking action Of course, you are going to find yourself sooner than later, way closer to where it is that you want to be. So those are all the benefits, I guess, the characteristics of somebody who is selfish, becoming selfish. And I want you, everybody who's listening, to just really think about that and what that means to you and how you can actually wear that as a badge of honor and really start shedding the ones like the hyperachiever, which is a very self-sabotaging narrative that a lot of us listen to, or the people pleaser, like those really aren't anything that I believe is helping you become the better version of yourself. So really shedding those and stepping into the identity of becoming selfish. Mm -hmm. and knowing that it will absolutely have a positive impact on those around you. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can't actually, like if your goal is to actually help or serve others, you can't truly do that if you're not taking care of yourself and and your own needs and wants first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's all about prioritizing yourself. And again, comes back to our planner. If you're not worth the 10 minutes a day that it takes to ground yourself, why are you laughing? Yes, you are. Did you do your self planner today? Is yeah. Is that why you're laughing? Oh. I just encourage you guys to take a few minutes and really ground yourself in what it is that you want from this day, how you want to be feeling. Look at the commitments that you've made. Ask yourself, are these still the commitments that I actually want to be acting on? There's no shame in making a decision from the space that you're in right now and changing your mind. You have the authority, you have the agency to change your mind at any time. You know, we're constantly evolving into our new self. 
And along with that comes new perspectives, new ideas, new feelings. And so you always have the agency to change your mind as well. So if there's something that you've committed to that you're today having to put onto your daily planner and you're like, ugh, I don't really want to be doing this. You don't have to, right? Own it and make the decision that this actually isn't in my best interest now. Mm -hmm. If that's going to you know, serve you. And the planner, again, the self-made day planner is a tool that really keeps me on track. And so I do have that kind of staring me in the face that when I have this like urge to say yes to something, I actually can look at that planner and be like, these are actually the commitments that I've made. And there are other people that are, you know, waiting on me to show up. So by me saying yes to this, I have to say no to this. And Mm -hmm. so that's been a great tool. And just as a side note, we do have a masterclass like tutorial that will teach you how to use that planner and it is available on Amazon. And we can get the recording link to you. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I think showing people that, you know, becoming selfish is really the evolution of awareness around maybe people pleasing tendencies. That's why we kind of kick this off by saying this is for all the people pleasers out there. First off, we don't believe you are a people pleaser. We just think that you might have those tendencies and we want to really arm you with ways to navigate through that and really become a little bit more selfish. Yeah, exactly. Anything else? I think that covered it. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week.